Hey, it's Snyder here. A couple of you asked me to do a tutorial for Cinema 4D, so here it is. Let's open it up. Cinema 4D is a 3D modeling program. I don't know if it's very good for games, but it's good for like visual stuff. Well, for topography, you start off, go to MoGraph, text. Now you got your text, some words. Make sure to change it. Don't want to have text all over your screen. Let's key its current position using that button there or F9 as a shortcut. Then you can go to the frame that you want to finish, move it over, key it again. And there's your whole video. It just slides in. I mean, you can make a whole video using just sliding words. You just gotta be out of frame and in frame whenever the time comes. Uh, another way to get words into the scene is to using what I used a lot in my video at the pop in, it's a lot easier. To do that, you have to go to basic on the words, change the visible and renderer to off. Control click the circle next to it to key it. And then go to the frame you want to pop in. Same thing, visible and renderer on. Just turn yellow, make it turn red. So now it won't show up until that exact frame, as you see here. Well, it's kind of cut off, but hey. Surprise. So, that's pretty, you can make a whole video using just those two techniques. But having a static camera isn't that good looking, so go to Lights, Camera. And you have your green lines here, which say, uh, show where the camera is pointing. You can click the box here on the right next to it to stick to it. So wherever you're looking is where the camera is going to go. So, camera works just like objects. You can key it, move it, rotate it, stuff like that. So let's key it there, move it a little bit, zoom out maybe. Oh wait, you have to click the frame first. Huh. Key it, move it, zoom out, you name it. Key it again. Bam. Now you, you probably noticed that the animation is already very smooth. If you want to be very uh, blocky and sudden you click the first frame of an animation change the interpolation to linear so the instant that key comes up it will start moving rather than ease into it it will stop suddenly as well this is good for uh, fast motion stuff well there's and there you can have a whole video right there too um, now the part comes where you want to make it an actual typography video you have to get music into the video and you have to time sync it to do that, you have to go to Window, Timeline, you can go to Camera, Expand it, right click it, Special Tracks, and then Sound. I think it's different for the other Cinema 4D versions, but this is how R12 works. Click Sound, on the bottom right you have Sound, a big bar, and a triple dot. Click that. Find your song. It has to be a dot .wav at 44 kilohertz can't be mp3 or it won't work so now we've got music it's gonna get a little loud right now you can't hear anything because the speaker icon on the bottom right isn't lit up so click that and you got your music yeah I didn't want anything too loud that's probably the quietest thing I got anyway now that we've got our sound we can time sync everything so let's go back to our surprise and it will pop in at a right note you can also use F and G to change frames one by one. Oh, it turns out again. Right there at that note, I'll move both the, wait, the on to 30. So at exactly 30, it'll pop up. Oh, yeah. When you're live, wa when you're watching it live through the editor, the sound is off by a little bit. So F and G is your best friend because it is super accurate. So let's do a quick test render. 60 is good enough. Well, it's not that well synced, but good enough. Oh, yeah, we've got a camera now, so you want to change. Right now, it's a 4 by 3 ratio, or maybe even a 5 4. You can change that going to render settings or control B for shortcut. Go to output. Change it to any resolution you like, like 1920 which is uh, 1080 I or P at 30 FPS. 
and I've got a nice widescreen presentation. Knowing just these few things I'll give you a whole video. So now that you've got the basic skills, you can make it. You have the hard part is keeping it interesting. What I did is I used a floor. Go to scene floor. It's basically a plane, but it extends infinitely in both the x and y axis, or x and z. X and Z according to this thing here. Um, now that we've got a barrier, you can have wards come through the floor at any time. So I'm going to do just that. At frame 45, I'm going to have this here pop in. I'm going to mute the music because I don't need it. Bam. So yeah, more space to come in, more directions to come from. And the, right now, if you render it, the gray, the floor is gonna be gray, which is kind of boring. So you can go to materials, and here in the bottom, hit File, New Material, or just double click the uh, area, click your material. You can change the color to whatever you want, and I'm just gonna change it to black for a sec. Make sure to drag the material onto your object. Bam, yeah, black. But black's kind of interesting, almost less interesting than gray. So. I'm going to go to basic and enable reflections. So now I've got a perfect mirror finish. Drop the brightness so it's not so dead on accurate. And it's a little darker so you can differentiate. And in my topography video, I turned on blurriness. I think it was 5%. Sample 6 and 64 respectively. It's going to increase render times a lot, but it looks very good. And especially when you're in motion. And if I were to do a test render right now, it'd take forever for these three seconds and so with that you've got everything you need to make a cool video so here it is from outside make sure to key your camera properly make sure the sounds in and you've got a whole video just gotta take this three second animation turn it into three minutes and just so you know Whenever you do a camera animation for a long video, it's going to increase your render times a lot. My typography video took, I think, what, I think 18 straight hours to get finished forever. Especially the blurs, they're adding like three seconds per frame at 3,000 frames. And it'll, yeah, it gets crazy. Um, also, if you want to cut down a render time or increase quality, go to render settings. Go to anti-aliasing, turn that up from geometry, like best animation to is good enough. It's going to look very smooth. The edges will become less retarded, less jaggedy, and it'll look way better. But when it's in motion, you might not notice it mu as much. But that's all you pretty much need. You could, uh... oh yeah, last thing. If you want to actually render the video for as a final output, go to save change the format to QuickTime MOV or AVI. I use QuickTime MOV because AVI will walk on your hard drive space like mad. So I use QuickTime Video, go to Options, change the depth to millions of colors plus. And you've got everything you need to go. Make sure to give it a name. Double dot. Save it. Video. Stuff. Save. So now, whenever you want to render it, you just go, uh, oh wait, oh yeah, before that, you got to go to frame range, change it to all frames, or manual, if you, uh, know what you're doing, like, mine pretty much stops at frame 60, I just put 60, but I just use all frames, and if you hit shift R or go to render, uh, shift R, go render to picture viewer, it'll give you a final output, it'll take forever, so be prepared for the worst. And I've got a six core, and it still took me 18 hours to run a topography video. I mean, I can't even imagine how long it would take on a dual core, but there you have it. When you're ready for a final output, make sure you have a lot of space on the target drive because the size becomes pretty substantial. My topography video was, I think, eight, nine gigs using the QuickTime movie format. I'm pretty sure using Dad AVI will top that by tenfold. Now that you know the basics and then some about making topography videos in 3D, create a VIN link me when you're done. I'd love to see it. If you need any help or advice, message me or comment on this video. This is X90 with his first tutorial.